Hans. Welcome to worship today. We're glad to have you all here. Today is the Mother of Our Lord Sunday. We don't often celebrate that in the Lutheran Church, but today it falls on a Sunday, so it just seems natural and right that we should honor Mary this day. And we, that doesn't mean we worship her, but we honor her today. Um, today in our service, we will be having blessing of the backpack, or if you forgot your backpack, blessing of the children. So if you work in public school or in any school, private school, higher education, we would like to uh, give you a blessing for this school year. And if you're a student, we'd love to bless your pack, your supplies, or just yourselves as you come to church today. So, um, also tomorrow we will be having a Bible study at 1030 as usual on Mondays. Everybody's welcome. Our food bank items are canned ham or spam, or the next week is canned Vienna sausages. And let's see, our offices are going to be closed on Labor Day, August, or September 6th, sorry, wrong minute. And September 12th, get ready for God's Work Our Hands Sunday. And let's see, September 19th, Sunday school begins. Are there any other announcements? Yes, please. Okay. Good morning. I just want to invite you all to celebrate Pastor's birthday today. And we're having a little reception afterwards, just short. Grab a cupcake and a and a and a punch, and uh, wish her happy birthday, and happy birthday, Pastor. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are sneaky. Would you all join me, please? Join me right now. because it was always the first part of school. So sometimes it was the, a lot of times, it was the first day of school. And you know, when you're a teacher, you don't get that day off. But uh, then when I became Lutheran, I realized this is the day that we honor Mary. And so I, I really like that day. So, <laughs> so it's a good day. Thank you, Katie. That's quite a surprise for me. Um, Anyway, thank you for worshiping with us. If you're online, we'd like to have you make a comment so we'll know you're there. And if you're here as a, a guest in person, we'd like you to fill out a visitor's card to let us know that you're here. I don't see any guests right now, so we're glad to have you all. Um, let's begin by saying our mission statement together. We, we the people, people of Holy, Holy Trinity, Trinity are called to glorify God by building vibrant relationships with Jesus and joyfully sharing his message with others. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And please share a greeting with those around you, those far away, wave or peace sign, smile. Glad to have you here today. Let's pray. We thank you, Lord God, for the safe travels that have happened this summer. We pray for those who may still be traveling. Thank you for our school year that is beginning and for the privilege to have a public and free education or a private education. We ask you for healing for those with coronavirus, especially Elizabeth and her family. And we pray that this disease will be subdued by your good and gracious will. We ask you to bless your church here in Shreveport, that we may be part of always spreading your good news to the world. Amen. And let's hear our beautiful prelude.
I invite you to please stand for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, God of manna, God of miracles, God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life of the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus the manna from heaven you are fed and nourished by Jesus the worker of miracles. There is always more than enough through Jesus. The bread of life, you are shown God's mercy, you are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. And there must be something wrong. <laughs> know what happened. Did I mention Elizabeth was not in the office? <laughs> okay, well, anyway, we'll, we'll, we will make the best of it, whatever it is, it's off. Um, yeah. We got some different words. It's okay. So, <laughs> let's begin our opening hymn. Do y'all have Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee? Okay, we're going to sing verses 1 and 2. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And also with you. Okay.
I invite you to pray with me the prayer of the day. Almighty God, in choosing the Virgin Mary to be the mother of your son, you made known your gracious regard for the poor, the lowly, and the despised. Grant us grace to receive your word in humility, and so to be made one with your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And please sit as we hear the word today. You have verses 1 through 9 of Psalm 34, right? Okay, we're on the same page now. We, they did not have the uh, hymn of praise. Okay, so we are going to uh, read this today and speak it instead of sing it. So I'll do the light print if you will respond with the bowl. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I will praise the Lord at all times. Praise to God my voice. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me out of all my terror. Let the humble seek his favor and rejoice. Look upon him and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I will bless the Lord at all times. Praise to God my voice. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. Let the troubles seek his favor and rejoice. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. I will bless the Lord at all times. Praise to God my voice. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Let the faithful seek his favor and rejoice. Fear the Lord, that you, you that are his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. I will bless the Lord at all times. Praise to God my voice. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing good. Let the faithful seek his favor and rejoice. Thank you. And now I'd ask the children to come down for a children's sermon, a blessing of the backpacks. So come on down. Bring, if you brought a backpack today, our school supplies, I ask you to come. And if you're a, a teacher slash staff person at a place of learning, we'd love to bless you as well. I see a lot of good backpacks because my stomach was always a little queasy on the first day or two. So I'd have back then, little girls all wore dresses to school every single day. I had a pocket and I'd put that big bottle of Pepto-Bismol in there, yeah. <laughs> Go off to school with it. I hope you don't have to do that. I hope you all feel good on your first day. So 
one thing that might help you not be nervous is to remember that Jesus is with you. So today we're going to do a little practice here to remind yourself. I'm going to say something about going back to school, and I want you to respond with, Jesus is with me. Can you do that? Can you practice? Jesus is with me. Say that. Jesus is with me. Okay. I'm going to say a line, and then you're going to say that. When it's the night before going to school, and I'm picking out my clothes and making sure I have all my school supplies, Jesus is with me. When I'm waking up and eating a healthy breakfast to start the day, Jesus is with me. When I meet my teachers and new friends in my class, Jesus is with me. When I'm praying at night and thanking God for my family, my friends, and my school, Jesus is with me. Okay, now we're going to have the blessing of your backpack, so you don't have to say anything. Just let's close our eyes to pray. Oh God, we thank you for these cherished children. We have promised to love them and nurture them and keep them safe and keep them excited and keep them ever seeking to learn more and develop their gifts for you. Through their study, may they gain tools to grow in love and faith and service to others. And now, God, we pray over their backpacks and over them. And we ask that you give these students wisdom and you give these students and their backpacks the strength to continue to go to school and you give them inspiration and you give them everything they need, teachers and staff as well. And we pray for all those in schools. Give us the energy, creativity, and love to bless these children. In your name we pray. Amen. Yeah. Okay, now to go in your backpack to remind you that we love you and we think about you while you're at school, I've got something for you to clip onto your uh, backpack somewhere. You, can, you have a choice of three different things. And we're going to talk about one of these right here. Okay, so you can have this key with a fleur de lis on it, and that little that little flower at the top called the fleur de lis is also the flower on here. Did you know that's a symbol for God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? So when, it does, doesn't it? It also means God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So you can choose this hand sanitizer to clip on your backpack with the Reminding you, God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are with you. You can have the key to remind you Jesus is the key to all your problems, and there's the God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Or you may have a cross. So you want to pick some colored rocks. It's little pretty rocks, though. So it's supposed to look pretty for girls, especially. Huh? It looks like turquoise, doesn't it? Yeah. I don't think it's anything valuable. So I'll, I'll walk by and I'll just let you have a chance to pick. You want a key? Okay. What do you want, Peter? The same thing in there. There's nothing different. I have the same thing in there. You want that? Okay. okay. Yes. You do? Okay. Now, do you want a key or a cross? Yes. Can you give it to your mom? Yeah. There you go. Thank you. That one? Do you want a key or a cross? I think that was it on the hand sanitizers. Wait, wait, wait. Let's see. Oh, here's one. Here's one. Okay. What would you like? What would you like? A key or a cross? Cross. Okay, there you go. What would you like, Presley? A key or a cross?
morning. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 61. Because the shame of God's people was double, and dishonor was proclaimed as their lot, therefore they shall possess a double portion, everlasting joy shall be theirs. For I, the Lord, love justice, I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are the people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks out himself with garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Galatians chapter 4. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir, through God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel today is according to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the Lord, mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts, he has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped the servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. According to the promise he has made to our ancestors, to Abraham, and to his descendants forever. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please sit. Let's pray. May the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts during worship be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, right here in the middle of summer, we have a day and a reading that sounds like Christmas. Would you agree? This sounds like something you hear around Christmas time. 
Did we make a mistake today on this bulletin? Well, yes, we made a lot of mistakes, but <laughs> <laughs> is the reading a mistake? No, the reading is not a mistake because here in the middle of summer, we get to honor Mary, the mother of our Lord. Now, we don't hear much about Mary except around Christmas time, and we Lutherans sometimes we're afraid that we might not ought to honor Mary too much because that, and I say this with deepest respect, that might make us feel or appear a little bit too Catholic. So, for instance, how, what do I mean? Sometimes we say, well, we don't do that or we don't do this, but we do honor Mary. Did you know uh, that we have such little, I guess, thoughts of Mary in the Lutheran churches that there are only three or four Lutheran churches in the whole United States named St. Mary's or Mary's. I mean, there's about 10,000 St. Paul's and St. John's, but only three or four St. Mary churches. So we're very cautious as Lutherans that we don't seem to honor Mary too much. But Martin Luther himself thought very highly of Mary, and he thought it was good for us to remember her and so here we go with this unusual reading at an unusual time of year, a reading about Mary and Elizabeth. So today we get to eavesdrop. We're eavesdropping in on this conversation between two women. And it's kind of fun to eavesdrop, especially if you eavesdrop accidentally. Uh, you can learn something you don't know, something you didn't know before. So we get to listen in on them. Now, much has been written about these two women, especially the younger one named Mary. God had told her something through a talking angel, not long before this scripture. In fact, it was immediately before today's gospel lesson. Mary had received this message. She was going to have a baby son. And she agrees to it. It seems like she's very willing to have the son be part of the plan. So uh, the angel Gabriel had come to her. But I think at first it was probably not good news. Not such good news because think of this. Mary is poor. She's young. She's not married. She's a virgin. And she's pregnant. And she had nothing to do with this becoming pregnant. It's all God's doing. So no wonder she went with haste to another town because she's got to have somebody to talk to. She needs a friend. She needs someone who will understand. She was downright scared because she could have been stoned according to the law. And also her fiance Joseph could have decided to desert her and would have been well within his legal limits. So Mary goes to see her cousin, Elizabeth. Now, I've often thought about why God decided to come to the world to us in Mary's baby. Why not use a woman who was older, maybe uh, had other children, so she'd know what she was doing with the baby? Or why not use a woman that had a position and had some power and some money that could really uh, lift Jesus into the limelight? and make his life really something people would notice. Um, God decided not to do that. Or maybe it would have been easier if God had just already had a baby here and just chosen one baby that was already born and not had to make a, a, a new baby himself. So I read not too long ago that perhaps God chose to come in this form through Mary's baby to show that Humans had no part in the plan. This was all God's plan. This was all God's doing, not ours. It was God's decision to bring us a savior. Mary did nothing about it, and the Holy Spirit came to her. It's God's action for Mary for the benefit of the world. Nonetheless, Mary is in a little bit of a predicament today. She could have said no, God, I'm not going to do that, and God could have used her anyway because we know God can use whomever God chooses. But Mary goes on to visit this cousin in some unknown town. Travel, as you've been told in those days, was very dangerous. 
So it would have been a rare thing for a woman to be traveling by herself, especially a young woman like this. She was probably with another group of travelers, maybe some relatives or someone going that way, uh, catching a, a ride or a walk along with them. And uh, she is seeking the support and advice of a, a mentor, someone older and wiser. The angel had told Mary that Elizabeth was going to have a baby too. And Elizabeth's baby is about six months further along than Mary's is. But when they meet the two cousins that must have been close, John, the baby that is Elizabeth's unborn baby, leaps within her. He's respecting the Jesus within Mary. If you look at the front of your bulletin today, you kind of see a picture of Mary and Elizabeth. Did that make it on there? Yeah, okay. <laughs> and so, okay, so Mary's baby, Mary's baby is the one that's just a light burning within, and Elizabeth's baby is the one that's much closer to being born. But here are the two women meeting. And Elizabeth exclaims, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has it happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? And Mary must be thinking, what? Finally, somebody is happy with me about this baby. And Elizabeth is the first person that calls Jesus Lord. And I would say, without a doubt, these two women are among the first believers in Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. And Mary is surely still questioning a lot of things, like, why has this happened to me? Why has God decided to use me in this way? Mary and Elizabeth, young mother and old mother, both know that they're not worthy of God coming to them to bear their special babies, but both are willing and both are obedient to God's decision, that God is working within their lives and they're willing to be part of it. And Mary breaks in with that song that we have heard so many times, the one called the Magnificat, that God is going to do amazing things through her son Jesus. He is going to scatter the proud and lift up the lowly and poor. He's going to feed the hungry and he's going to leave the rich wanting. And we have been reading in our Loaves and Fishes uh, lessons lately about the poor being fed by five loaves and two fishes. So he definitely does do that. He lifts up and feeds the poor and hungry. Jesus is going to turn things upside down, and that's what Mary sings about. And Mary has been invited to be part of that experience, and it's going to be life-changing, a divine intervention. Now, you may ask yourself, like Mary sometimes, why has something happened to me in a certain way? Why does the Lord come to me? I'm certainly not worthy. Why has the Lord asked me to do this or that? None of us are worthy of the Lord coming to us. First in our baptism and then to us through Holy Communion. We talk about this a lot. Christ is present in the bread and wine. And we often talk about God coming to us through that. But God also comes to you through others, through the voices of others. Maybe someone comes and speaks to you and says, would you like to teach Sunday school? That could be the Holy Spirit speaking to you. And you immediately want to say, what? Oh, no, not me. Or do you say, yes, I might be willing to try that. Are we willing to answer yes when we're asked to do something? Maybe you've been asked to be an usher. And you want to say, oh, no, not me. I'm not good at talking to people, especially people I don't know. But thank goodness we do have people willing to do it. But God may be speaking to you through another person, saying, maybe you should consider doing this, something you've never done. Get out of your box and get into something new. Maybe God is asking you to devote your life to something new. Maybe missions are some type of God's special work. And God's extraordinary plan might be breaking into your life. If you're a young person, maybe God's asking you to think about God's work in your life. Or maybe if you're, you've got a career established and you're in business, doing well, and God comes in and asks you to do something. 
unexpected. Or perhaps you're retired already. Yes, God can use you too, and you can't just say, God, you know I'm past the age of helping with this or that. Perhaps God has a plan for you to do something different, something you've never done. At least consider it when you're asked. The news that you get asked to do something might be a little bit troubling like Mary's news was to her. Uh, it may require that you have to change your life plans and go to school or do something different. How can this be, you ask? Am I a servant of the Lord, question mark? The answer is, yes, you are. You are a servant of the Lord. And maybe you look for a friend to talk to like Mary did. That's good. God gives us Christian friends. We have this body of believers here with us. And we can go to someone in the church that we feel close to and ask them, do, what do you think? Do you think I can do this? Now remember, you might resist God, but God could use you anyway in some other plan. Our God will just find somebody else if you refuse. But if you answer yes, you will find that the power of the Most High God overshadows you. Why God overshadowed Mary. And the Holy Spirit will come to you and the Holy Spirit will help you to do what you've been asked to do. And you'll find that the Lord is truly with you. And like Mary, you, as you go to others for advice and they give you a positive affirmation such as Elizabeth gave to Mary, you'll find that your life will never be the same once that you do this. Steve and I experienced a little bit of something like this 20 plus years ago when one night in the winter, I'd say it was right after the first of the year, it was cold night in Oklahoma, and I got a call from a lady that I could barely remember. She'd been in one of my night classes at the college years ago, and she was asking me to take an exchange student from Chile. And she said he was in a bad situation. He really needed a home. And I said to her, I, we didn't fill out any paperwork to get an exchange student, right? <laughs> and Steve looked at me like he was, when I was talking, he's going like, who is that? And hang up the phone and those kind of comments that men tend to give. But I hung up the phone that night saying, well, we'll think about it. So the Holy Spirit must have overshadowed both of us because in a couple of days, our new exchange son, Nelson, was coming through the door, and he had a smile that would have melted an iceberg, and he was just what we needed. We didn't know it, but he was just what we needed to heal our hearts. We had had a bad year, a hard year, and he was that person who helped heal us, and I have no doubt that God sent him to us and sent us to him. He needed a new place to be. And we needed a new son and didn't know it. And he still considers us to be uh, important in his life, even after all these years. We still hear from him, and he invited us to his wedding and even sent us a plane ticket to go to his wedding. So he's still part of our family. We call him our, our Chilean son, and through him opening that door, we were able to accept um, five other exchange students through the course of the next few years. You just never know what God might ask you to do. Well, today's Mary's, today, Mary's model of faithful disciple leads us to consider God's work of the cross in our lives. Her openness to God will remind us that blessed is she or he who believes, and it will help us to be open as well. Mary's life turned out to be about Jesus. Now, it started out sounding like we were having a reading about two women, turns out. The reading is, uh, is about Jesus because Mary's whole life was dedicated to being with her son. She was there at the foot of the cross that day. So the message we proclaim about Mary's son in our lives will say that the world has not been the same since God's extraordinary timing broke into our broken world in a young woman's life, a time when God came to live with us 
in the presence of a baby. And in the end, this gospel and any gospel is always about Jesus. Amen. And today we will sing that song of Mary's. Our leader is going to be Kate. Thank you. And you may feel free to join in with her on the uh, part that's printed here. Just an added note. After you sing it through the second time, go back and sing the first verse again until the middle. And that was nobody's fault, just the printer. With the whole church, let us confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ, and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all creation. You have revealed your love for people, overlooked and cast aside, sending your Son to be born among the humble and poor. Send your church to proclaim good news to those who feel abandoned, despised, or rejected, and make our congregations places of genuine welcome and hospitality. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
All creation longs for healing and restoration. Thwart the destruction of plant and animal habitats and amplify the voices of those who advocate for wise stewardship of the Earth's resources. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember your promise to our ancestors and look to you for justice. Expose pride, greed, and exploitation wherever it is found and raise up humble leaders who act upon behalf of those who are poor, oppressed, or in other need. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your spirit lives in our lives, in our hearts, and makes us heirs of salvation. Rescue us from shame and dishonor. Lift up the lowly, fill the hungry with good things, and have mercy on those who turn to you for help, especially those listed in your bulletin, Michael and Phalian, Michael Phalian, the Powell children, Susan, Kathy, Joe, Jack, Margaret, John, Kinsley, Dot, Joanne, and Ellen, and the birth of Demi Gray Sibley, Kenneth and Evelyn, Eve, Evelyn Covington, Curington for healing. Please also pray for my husband Todd and those that we name in our hearts and our minds. God, in your mercy. Mary's song of praise and amazement echoes through this assembly. Attend to those in this congregation expecting a child and console who, those struggling to conceive. Come to the aid of those enduring a difficult pregnancy and those who have experienced a miscarriage. God, in your mercy. We give thanks for the saints who have found refuge in you. O oh God, especially Mary, Mother of Jesus, as you have delivered them from all their afflictions, so save us from all our earthly troubles until that day when we sing your praise together in heaven. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, be with us as we celebrate with those who have a birthday this week, especially Pastor Joan, Katie Parker, Mackenzie Bankson, and Ellie Volden. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O oh God, confident in the promise of your saving love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We lift up to you, Lord God, also those who have died. Most recently, the mother of Karen Carlsrud and the cousin of Walt Butman. We lift up to you those in our hearts with prayers that are too heavy to be spoken. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing as our gifts are brought forward. Let us pray together. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us what you receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. 
This morning we will take the body and blood of our Lord Jesus and we have had to go back to our COVID restrictions. So uh, you may space yourselves as you come down and I will have the bread. The ushers will be guiding you and you can go to either side for the cup and then back to your seats. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. And along with Peter and Mary, we give praise and thanks, and we join in their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after the supper, he took the cup, he blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people. Do this for the remembrance of me. Teach us to pray, Lord, as your Son prayed. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come, taste, and see that the Lord is good. You're all welcome to come. This is the Lord's table. You may sit as the ushers guide you.
And now may this body and this blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, bless you and keep you to eternal peace and send you out telling the story about him. Amen. receive this blessing as we go. May Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending hymn is Thankful Hearts and Voices Raised, and this is such a good tune. Why don't we sing it twice? <laughs> 